All right, so let's take a look at bias. You've probably heard of this word before, but maybe not in this context specifically. So bias is any anything that will skew our data and cause us cause an overestimation or underestimation of our results, let's say. So over estimation or underestimation of our results. So selection bias and response bias are the only two that we look at in Math 3, but in AP Stats there are more uh, types of bias that you would look at. So let's just talk about selection bias. Selection bias is the bias introduced by the selection of individuals, groups, or data for analysis in such a way that proper randomization is not achieved. So in other words, you did not gather a random sample. That would be selection bias. So no, wait a minute. I don't know if I want that to be muted. So no, um, let's just say not a random sample. Something caused it to not be random. <clears throat> so some examples are from a class containing 12 girls and 10 boys, three students are to be selected to serve on a school advisory panel. Here are four different methods of making the selection. Select the first three names on the class roll. Select the first three students who volunteer. Place the names of the 22 students in a hat. Mix them thoroughly and select three names from the mix. Or four, select the first three students who show up for class tomorrow. Which is the best sampling method among these four? If you want the school panel to represent a fair and representative view of the opinions of your class, explain the weaknesses of the three you did not select as the best. All right, so definitely option three would be the best. And selecting the first three names on the class roll is not random. That is convenient, we would call it. Number two, selecting the first three students who volunteer is usually only going to be outspoken students, which is not a fair representation of all students. <clears throat> so let's put only outspoken students will volunteer. And then number four, so like the first three students who show up for class tomorrow, those are only the timely students. So you haven't chosen anyone that might be late to class. And each student needs a fair chance of being chosen. So you've only chosen that type of student that would be on time to class. All right, so number three was definitely the best method, and I think you can hear that when it's read. So response bias is the tendency of a person to answer questions on a survey untruthfully or misleadingly so it's something that causes bias in the way they respond to your question that is response bias tell whether the question is potentially biased explain your answer if the question is potentially biased rewrite it so that it is not don't you agree that the voting age should be lowered to 16 because many 16 year olds are responsible and informed so i would say don't you agree is trying to persuade someone to choose that. And then 16-year-olds are responsible and informed is subjective and would cause people to maybe think that even though they might not have thought that before. So I would change it to simply um, should the voting age be lower to 16? It takes away those parts that are biased. And just leave it with that. The second one says, do you want to eat a hamburger or the usual vegetable sandwich? So saying usual vegetable sandwich would influence someone to choose their usual to make it easy on the waiter or the waitress that might be asking this question. So you could just say, do you want to eat a hamburger? Question mark. There's a couple ways you could rewrite this one. Let's say... Do you want to eat a hamburger? 
question mark. You could say, what would you like to eat and leave it wide open? You could rewrite it various ways. Those are just two examples. And then it says, how would a fast food franchise owner who used a survey to find out about employer-employee relations present response bias? So some of you might have had this happen where your boss asked you to fill out a survey about how well they're doing and how well they're treating you and you didn't feel like you could be honest with them. And it is because the employees don't feel that they can be honest and open because it might affect their job. Let's say it may impact their job status. Like maybe the boss would treat you differently or maybe you would get fired. So people typically don't want to reply in any kind of negative way to those types of surveys. So another example, let's think, is the following sample a good sample or a biased sample? Mr. Schwarzenegger is interested in estimating the average height of Mooresville High School students. It would be too difficult to measure every student at Mooresville High School, so instead he examines the basketball team. He uses the average height of the basketball team as his approximation for the average height of Mooresville High Schools. <clears throat> so it says, identify who's who and what's what. What's the population? So let's put all students at Mooresville High School. What's his population he was aiming for? The sample he chose was the basketball team. And it says, what's the variable? What are we looking at and what are we measuring? We're measuring to find the average height. And then it says, is this scenario a good sample or a biased sample explain why? It is definitely biased because the basketball team tends to be above average height. They are not representative of the population. Let's put both. So they tend to be above average height and are therefore not representative of the population. All right, so that's it for our video on bias.